a little girl waving goodbye to her dad. A man crying as he said goodbye to his wife. Thousands of women and children like us fighting to get onto the train. We were escaping the war in Ukraine and we were told, close the phones, close the curtains. A bomb could land on the train as we fled. In a cabin meant for two, 12 of us squeezed together. My legs shook. I struggled for strength and hope. I was terrified my mom and younger siblings would get killed. But this wasn't my first war. I'm half Ukrainian and half Palestinian. By the age of 22, I had escaped two wars and become a refugee twice. I grew up in a Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon. My family and I, seven members, had to live in a single room, and I went to the American school just outside the camp. I remember doing my homework in the bathroom to get some quiet and space. I felt ashamed. I was a refugee, and I was ashamed to tell my friends that I lived in that camp. The camp was filled with domestic violence, child abuse, and conflicts. People were killed daily. Gunshots and bombings were the norm. Then one day, when we were away, our house got bombed too. And as the situation continued to worsen in Lebanon, we fled to Ukraine. So here I now was, standing body to body with strangers, in the confines of a train carriage, listening out for yet more bombs, escaping war in Ukraine. Terrified, my mom looked at me. Zoya, we should sing. And so, we sang Ukrainian folk songs. Як тебе не любити Києва мій. And with each song, our resilience grew stronger, and I felt a kind of internal freedom that I vowed no war could ever take. Two days later, we made it to the Polish border. And from there, we migrated to Switzerland. And I felt compelled in this peaceful country to do something. I started sharing my story with Swiss schools, churches, and newspapers. I wanted to do more as a peace ambassador. And I won a scholarship from the European Commission to come to One Young World. <laughs> Sitting with other refugee delegates at the summit last year, we shared our stories, our struggles, and our definition of a home. We found solidarity. We understood each other. Eleven young leaders from nine different countries at the One Young World Summit in Manchester. That is how Waves to Home, a global storytelling movement, started. Waves to Home is a platform for everyone who has been forced to leave their home behind. The name represents the struggle of all the migrants that had to go through, and also the waves that took the lives of so many. We provide a safe space for refugees, migrants, and displaced people to share and inspire resilience through their stories. Munir, was forced to leave his home and childhood in war and torn Syria. But when he arrived in Lebanon, he realized that the war in his head had only just begun. Through Waves to Home, Munir was able to share his story, process his trauma, and also find hope again. And then there's Manal, 
Her documentation and identity as a Palestinian refugee was preventing her from studying abroad. She responded with a video campaign. She shared her story and it went viral. So viral, the Portuguese granted her a visa to study master's degree. Yeah. Waves to Home can transform our stories into peaceful weapons to challenge and change. Today, I stand confidently and I'm proud to say I am a two times refugee. I am no longer ashamed because I lived in a refugee camp or had to study in the bathroom. No longer ashamed, no. Yes. Wars and occupation bring so much struggles, pain, and traumas. But inside all of us, it's also love and hope. Don't let life rob you of your resilience, your spirit, your internal freedom. A war can never take away. You want to help communities sustain and build lasting peace? Find your power and narrate your own story. If I can find peace in my story, so can you. Thank you.